and Aggies coming up next. It's a sea of red in Lincoln. The Husker faithful have packed Memorial Stadium once again. Oh, sure, last year was a bit of a disappointment, but hey, look, the coach is smiling again. That's the best part of college football. Every year is a new year, and the Huskers have a jamming QB. Perhaps the Lord of the Championship rings? The exciting Jamal Lord leading the big red attack. Go, Go, Will this be the return of the feared black shirt defense? Can the Huskers run the ball down the throat of Utah State? It's a season of mystery and suspense. The new Nebraska against the Utah State Aggies. Big 12 Bedlam starts now on Fox Sports Net. the campus of the University of Nebraska in Lincoln. Kia Sarah presents College Football Saturday as today. The 23rd ranked Nebraska Cornhuskers play host to the Utah State Aggies. Hi everybody, I'm Joel Myers alongside Dave Lapman. Welcome once again to Lincoln. Well, offensively, plenty of question marks coming in for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. On the defensive side of the ball, though, the black shirts last week against Oklahoma State looked like they were in midseason form. Well, they've really responded, Joel, to a change in philosophy. Bo Pelini came from the Green Bay Packers and is now the defensive coordinator, and it is an attacking scheme. They are punching the offense and making the offense counterpunch them, whereas last season it was a stay at the line of scrimmage, read and react. They're so athletic, they're so fast, Bo Pelini is utilizing all of it. Tight end position of strengths for both squads, a Mackey Award candidate. Under the microscope today, Chris Cooley. Well, they run a lot of formations, Utah State, and I'll tell you, you see Cooley in a lot of different uh, places, Joel. He'll line up at tight end, he'll line up at fullback. He'll be the only back in a one-back set. 6'4", over, over 250 pounds, runs 4'6". They want to get the, the ball in his hands as much as they can. He is going to be the key to this squad in so many different sets and formations, like you said, offensively for the Aggies. Can they hold up, pull off the upset? We'll find out over the next three hours. First, though, Mike Goldberg in the studio. Oklahoma State, more the same today, marching towards kickoff. Number 23, Nebraska. Saturday brought to you by Joe Sarah. This is the walk in Lincoln, Nebraska. Since 97, Huskers 24-2 in August and September. Third best mark in the nation. Will they mark up Utah State today? Billy Ray, what should we expect to see in this game? A lot of passing from Utah State. A lot of running from that Nebraska offense. The Nebraska offense, they still got to get their stuff together. They only had one touchdown last week. They do. This will be one of those 200, 100-yard days for Jamal Lord. 200 yards passing, 100 yards rushing on the, on the ground to get this offense going. All right, don't forget we'll see you at the half on the Nissan Halftime Report. Top 25, Big 12 scores and highlights. Take a look at number 10, Chris Stallworth. He and the Aggies set to go against Nebraska. The kickoff is coming up next. See you at halftime, everybody. Welcome back once again to one of the great sites for college football. Pretty tough to beat. Lincoln, Nebraska. Joel Myers, Dave Lappin, Jim Knoxon. A perfect day, 80 degrees, and the eighth time these two teams are getting together. None have been close. Nebraska winning last year easily and turned it off in the second half. As Nebraska, you think they feel good about their defense. Sandro DeAngelis is going to kick it away. won the toss, but they want their black shirts on the field first, Dave. They do. They want the black shirts to set the tempo of this football game, just like they did last week against Oklahoma State with that stifling defensive effort. Jerome Dennis back deep along with David Fiafia. And Fiafia is their all-purpose guy. He does everything. Punt returns. Their leading tailback. So we are ready to go from Lincoln, Nebraska. We could not ask for better weather. And as Jim Knox mentioned, 257th consecutive setup. Wow. DeAngelis. I think it may be that way all day for Nebraska downwind, regardless of what end they're working from. Travis Cox is his coach, McDenney, he told us he was all excited about coming to play and start in this stadium. He's a coach whose son, his father, a longtime high school coach, a very successful one, 
And Travis Cox, big kid, thick kid on the bottom half of his body. He's a tough kid and threw for 280 yards in his debut as a starter. So we shouldn't see a guy with happy feet back there. No, we shouldn't, Joel. And he had 19 completions in that opener to nine different wide receivers. So he distributed the ball to all quadrants of the field. Right away, they work out of the shotgun. Moving the pocket by design and going back the other way. Great call to start the contest. And the tie it in for Utah State. Losing the football is a control, though. Jason Stevens on the completion. So deception to start the game right away for Travis Cox. And he's got a big offensive line. Now can they hold up against the black shirts? Penn, Vandermade, Galliano, Hutton, an Outland Trophy candidate, and Tupea is the right tackle. Fia, Fia, and Cooley you'll see in the backfield. Cooley a tight end, setting up at fullback. Stallworth, their best wide receiver. Tony with experience, and Patrick McNutt, the other tight end. Look at all the motion and movement, trying to confuse Nebraska defensively, their assignments and their keys. Nothing conventional, and a play fake right away to Fia, Fia. The dump off. And the other tight end getting involved. Make not this time, or make it Cooley out of the backfield. And good yardage, close to another tight end. Defensively, how challenging is it going to be for Thomas, Bingham, Adams, and Johnson? They're going to be spinning their wheels today. That's obvious at the outset. Hollowell, Rude, and Demario Williams, number seven, showed up on the film big time from last week. Washington and Rickett to the corners. Bullock's a couple of interceptions last week in Bland are the experienced safeties. So now second and short. All of a sudden, a couple of plays, 20 yards for Utah State. They'll spread that defense. Movement, shifting, movement again. I mean, they're just, they're trying to get Nebraska back in their heels. Cox, he had a cushion on the outside, and he's got his wide receiver, Raymond Hicks, for a first down. So good audible and a checkoff at the line by Travis Cox. Yeah, moving the chains. Two first downs already. The very first play of the game, T.J. TJ Hollowell, the linebacker, had a shot to make a play in the open field and stop that throwback screen, and he missed the tackle. As a result of that, Utah State got positive yards in that first play of the game, and you can see some confidence being generated. Once again, all the movement and shifting, trying to confuse Nebraska. Three straight completions for Cox. Now for the 44. Pocket holds up well. Whole field to look at, and Cooley's got a first down and won't go down. All the way to the 37 of the Cornhuskers. So not exactly intimidated coming out. Well, it's going to start up front for this Utah State offensive line. They have to give Cox protection. Look, at they got two tight ends. Watch the pocket that's formed. They keep the tight ends in, help to in protection a little bit, and then wide open down the football field, Cooley finds a little seam in the zone in front of the linebacker. Barrett Root tries to rip it out of there, but unsuccessfully, Cooley good tight grip on the football. Multiple shifts as they hit the slot man wide open. Kenny Coleman knocked out of bounds with another first down, and that was almost a motion call. It didn't look like they were set before the snap. I think it's coming back. I agree. And uh, once again, a penalty self-destruction. Illegal shift by the Aggies is going to be costly. Last week against Utah, they had a 100-yard interception return for a touchdown, nullified by penalty. Two guys shifting at the same time is illegal, and one of them has to be set for a full second. Man in the backfield never got set, Dave. And it's, it nullifies a big play. I mean, that's not just, that's just not a five-yard play. But two guys, both these guys moving at the same time. One of them has to get set for a full second. And as a result, wide open, a confusion in coverage by Nebraska, negated by a self-destruction by the Aggies with the penalty. What a read by Cox, though. Uncovered his slot, man, and he got it as quickly as you can get it out there. So now it's going to be first and 15. Delay. Fia Fia's got room. Takes it inside the 35. Breaks a tackle to the 30. Nine carries, 54 yards. Tough little back at 5'8", 200 pounds. Yeah, he doesn't have breakaway speed, Joel, but he's got really good hands. He's got tremendous vision. And that time, he took it north and south in a hurry. And I, I tell you, I think, I think Utah State has accomplished what they wanted to do. A little bit tentative, the black shirts. I mean, they're not flying around the football field like they did against Oklahoma State. Barrett Rude misses a tackle. Picks up an extra five yards before it's finalized by Fabian Washington. So 11 yards on the first carry of the day for Fia Fia. As they send Coleman in motion. Cox in trouble coming back the other way. 
And what an open field tackle on Fia Fia. Coming up out of the secondary, it was T.J. Hollowell. Yes, Hollowell out of the secondary, the safety. Hollowell missed a tackle on the first throwback screen, the first play of the game. You're not going to fool him twice. Misdirection. All the flow of the play goes to the left. Throwback screen to the right. If he catches the football, there's Hollowell. Hollowell says, I'm not going to, it's not going to happen again. I'm not going to miss two tackles on the same play. So now third. A little more than four, almost five for Cox on a drive that started at his own 20 and again. He got more than the right off, tackle. But his right tackle just lifted up. Yeah. No flag yet. No, he was never in a, he never right. set himself. He was never got in a three-point stance. He stayed in a two-point. They're going to call timeout. It's a good call by Travis Cox, a real composed quarterback because five yards are out of field goal range. Yeah, you don't want to take a penalty here, absolutely. So what an impressive start for Utah State on national TV for the first time since 97, only their second national appearance since 81. By Dr. Pepper. BU, nothing's better. It's Dr. Pepper. By Nissan and your local Nissan dealer. And by T-Mobile. Get more from life. Big third down coming up for Utah State and Travis Cox. Looking underneath. Grab is made. But it looks like Raymond Hicks, yes, is going to be short of the first down by a little less than two yards inside the 29. Fabian Washington with a nice sure tackle there. Now the decision for Utah State. Go for it. There's in my mind not much of a decision. This would be a very long field goal attempt. Fourth down and short yardage. You might as well go. You're certainly not going to punt. You have nothing to lose here. And it's into the wind. So it's a 45, 46 yard attempt into the wind. More than 50 for Mick Dennehy. And they will go for it. Now watch this as they empty the backfield. Cox has not missed. He's 5 of 5 so far. Quarterback sneak right in here. Looking for the screen over the middle. Oh. And it's dropped by Cooley. Wow. It was available for the first down, but Cooley couldn't hang on. Boy, I'll tell you, I, I'm not sure. I guess it was a long yard, but the way they had the defense lined up in, in empty backfield, I thought it could have been a very easy, very easy quarterback sneak. Watch Cooley. They're going to run the, the tight end screen to the middle of the football field. He just pivots, tries to pick up his offensive lineman. Boy, a little kick out block, and he might have had big, big yards down the middle of the football field. First opportunity for Utah State is not executed well enough. Their go-to guy, Cooley, dropped the pig. Jamal Lord, that quarterback once again for the Huskers, the senior from Bayonne, New Jersey. Josh Davis takes off. He had 95 yards last week. And pulled down to the secondary after a healthy gain of seven. Jerome Dennis on the hit. Well, is there going to be balance? Last year, Jamal Lord only completed 47% of his got passes. Got to be better this year. Didn't hit passes for even 100 yards last week. Incognito, Erickson, that's the experience. Sewell, Anderson, Villa Waldrop on the offensive line. Davis and Davies in the backfield. Pilkington had to be a fan of the Beatles with those banks. LaFleur and Harrion. Very good tight end in Matt Herring, a great average last year. And when we watched him yesterday, Dave, you said he was almost like a tweener between a wide receiver and a tight end. He's like a big wide receiver. Watch this right here. Some action coming up. You called it. Did they get the seal on the left side? Giving to the outside. Davis, the senior from Loveland, Colorado, has the first down to the 40. So two snaps. Davis has 11 defensively for the Aggies. And they are going with the 3-4. Jackson, Tapea, and Gates. The linebackers are going to have the work cut out for him. Putnam, Watts, Wilson, and Frederick. And in the secondary on the corners, Dennis and Clark with Rosecrans and Shank. The experience from Shank at the safety position. Davis again looking inside. Nothing available. Chopped down behind the line of scrimmage. Penetration there. Back at the 39, Putnam blew up that play. The strong side backer, a junior from Brigham City, Utah. Like a 10 Hendricks type of guy. 6'7", almost 240 pounds. Long arms, plays with tremendous leverage. He's going to be a factor in the passing game. When he drops back in the zones, it's like a sequoia tree out there. When he rushes, when he rushes the pass and gets those hands up, he presents a problem. Passing situation, second and long, almost a dozen. Lower the three-step drop, complete. Going to LaFleur, who moved up in the depth charts, and now they say he did not hang on to the football. Yes, he did. It's up to the 43, near the 44-yard line on the short game. Pulled down by Estelle. Very short tackle by Estelle. He stopped the journey immediately. And Barney Cotton, the new offensive coordinator for Nebraska, wanted to get Jamal Lord's feet 
and, and on the ground in terms of getting into the passing attack and through that short pass to complete his first ball and get his confidence going. Third and a little over six yards needed for Lord. Three wide receivers set. And available over the middle. Easy first down to Harrion. Yeah, the linebacker just settled in between the coverage. First down, Nebraska. Dr. Pepper game break. Let's head back to Mike Goldberg in the studio. NFL with the Detroit Lions for 12 years at linebacker. Uh, it, it's really going to influence instant credibility with the kids. Davis doesn't get to the marker. He's short of the first down by about a yard. Well, yesterday we caught up with Frank Solich, talked about the transition in the new staff and especially to the coordinators. They're a high energy staff. They coach fast. They coach fast in meetings. They coach fast on the football field. And I think um, that kind of energy has been picked up by our players. A little carry over from the staff onto the field. And now Nebraska finds itself in the red zone, Joel. They had red zone problems last week, finishing drives fourth and short. Lord calling his own number. He's got it. He got help from behind. It looked like Judd Davies gave him a shove, the fullback. Absolutely, Joel. He did. He, he hammered it up in there and gave him that little extra oomph. A difference in philosophy. Fourth and short for Utah State. They spread the field and try a middle screen. Fourth and short for Nebraska. They say, we're going to muscle you and knock you around and reestablish the line of scrimmage backwards. And Jamal Lord, 6'2", 225 pounds. That's a linebacker type. That's a powerful guy. Good legs. Inside of seven minutes left of the quarter, Lord stretching to the boundary. Didn't want to pitch it. Putnam was waiting for him. Big time tackle. Putnam missed all of last season with a shoulder injury. He was first team all Big West, though, as a freshman back in 2000. Held his ground there. He's a talented guy. You know, and, and, and look, he's six foot seven, and his wingspan seven foot six. I mean, he's got those long arms. He, he doesn't have to bend over to tie his shoes. So he plays with leverage, you know, and it's hard to get into his body. It's like the mad stork, Ted Hendricks, out there on the edge a little bit. Just like you. Yeah, exactly. Long and lean. Second and nine <laughs> for Lord and the Huskers. It's scoreless so far. Again, the option. Jamal Lord trying to break through. That time, though, Michael Gates got him the backside and the sophomore out of Arlington, Texas. Nebraska, if they can get their passing game in order, they will be a difficult challenge because they have the power running attack between the tackles. They can run the option to stretch the field horizontally. And then if they can get the ball down the football field, you have to defend the whole field. And that's what they're trying to get accomplished. And that's what Frank Solich has in mind. Now what Nebraska needs, third and long. Lord breaking the tackle, first down and more. Touchdown, Nebraska. Well, there's no question about that man's running abilities, Joel. Putnam, the big six foot seven inch linebacker, had an open shot at him in the in the open field, missed him. Jamal Lord jukes inside of him, lowers the shoulder pads, takes it to the house. And that's what Jamal Lord is capable of doing. The number one returning quarterback in terms of rush yards in the country. And that effort last year was third best in NCAA or 1A history. So this guy can run it. The penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. Jamal Lord a little bit effusive in his celebration. That's a no-no. And new rule this year, they can be taken on the extra point or on the open on the following kickoff. And Utah State decides to take it on the kickoff. DeAngelis for the point after. And he pushed it. Yep, he missed. missed two field goals last week. And we might see David Dykes this afternoon. In fact, I think Dykes is the one tonight favorite to make his appearance this afternoon. Nebraska 6, Utah State nothing. Nebraska with a 6 to nothing lead on a 15-yard touchdown run by that young man, Jamal Lord. Now David Dykes is going to kick it away, but don't forget later. Cottage Football Saturday, presented by Kia Sarah, continues on Fox Sports Net. We'll head to the Pacific Northwest in a good matchup. Washington trying to bounce back from an opening day setback at Ohio State, matching up with Indiana. The Hoosiers had their problems last week on the road. That's the second half of our doubleheader today. A little Big Ten, Pac-10 matchup, and 
boy, Nebraska not only misses the extra point, they're penalized on the kickoff for the celebration by Jamal Lord after he scored the touchdown. They are kicking off from their own 20-yard line. Should be good position, field position, for Utah State. So a true freshman from Spring, Texas, who is close to overtaking Sandro DeAngelis for placement, he is going to kick it away. Will it find the sideline? No. It'll be brought back by Jerome Dennis. Dennis making a mess. Nifty move to the 30. Slowed down right at the 33-34 by Fabian Washington. Well, Lord picked up the first down because of a busted tackle and found the end zone. Watch Put Putnam right there. He's going to miss. I mean, he's got the, the contain. He played the outside leverage like he should have. Lord just made him miss. He just juked him right out of his uh, out of his cleats. He's on scoring drive. 13 plays, covering 71 yards, almost six minutes off the clock. Little ball. After Utah State, David had it for four minutes and failed to capitalize. Little ball control there, Joel. You know, eat that clock up. So wasted opportunity for Utah State. Now can they get it done? They shift Fia Fia out of the backfield. It's empty. Cox on the short drop, settling in his cooling. The man who dropped the automatic first down takes it. Four first down to the completion across the 45. Jim Knox. Okay, thank you, Joe. Barney Cotton, offensive court in Nebraska, just holding court here on the Nebraska sidelines. He said, good job. you got to pick up the tempo. Also change the little blocking schemes on that offensive line. One thing, Jamal Lord right over here, guys, got plenty of congratulations when he came to the bench after scoring the touchdown. But Frank Solich got in his face and said, no more celebrating in the end zone like that after a touchdown. That cost him. It did. It cost him field position, Knox, exactly. And now Cox audibleizing, checking off at the line. Cooley trying to hear him on the right side. He looks back, and he's got a cushion on the outside again. Stallworth with his first grab of the day. Their talented wide receiver, a senior from Sacramento. Big, big, big target, Joel. 6'3", 214 pounds. Last week against Utah, five catches, 113 yards, and a touchdown. Look at the cushion. Big respect there. Tremendous cushion. Now he closes the cushion. Little stop, and come back to the football. Excellent, excellent route run. Not too bad coverage, really, but after the catch, he's affected because of that size. Big body out there. Travis Cox starting the day, eight for nine for 65 yards. Eight on the last completion to Stallworth. And looking for the first down, plenty of time. Cooley taking on the linebacker over the middle, trying to shed Barrett Root, who slowed him down. But a first down again at Utah State. Let's face it, Aggie fans back home in Logan must be feeling like we've seen this last week. Four times inside the 35 of the first half against Utah. And on those four possessions, Dave, only three points. Exactly. They have to finish their drives a little better. Cooley already has four catches. The one that is in his mind, though, was the drop middle screen on fourth and one. That could have led to points for Utah State. Uh, Travis Cox completed his first six straight to four different receivers. Cox, well, we got him. protection, wide open, what a grab by Cooley! Touchdown Utah State! A contortionist on that catch. Philip Bland was in the area, Joel. Philip Bland didn't make a good play on the football. Cooley catches the ball, it's thrown behind him a little bit. He shows a good ability to adjust to the football. This guy's 6'4", 252 pounds. And here he comes off the line of scrimmage. He's just running right down the hash mark, stretching the field. Great adjustment to the ball. Bland runs by it. Doesn't take a proper angle on the football. Nobody there to touch Cooley. He scores and touch football. Nobody lays a fingernail on him. What a strange beginning. Hamlin the point after. It's good. And Utah State has the lead over Nebraska. What a beginning, though, for Travis Cox and his partner. Chris Cooley with five catches. A touchdown to the last draft from Cox and a Utah State lead. Well, from what I've seen already, put him on the top ten right now. I'll tell you, he's got five catches already, Joel, for 85 yards. That 41-yard touchdown catch, the third longest reception of his career. He is legitimately big time. Josh Davis on the short kick. Gets it up near the nine. Big lane on the left side. Room to run. He'll be chopped down, crossing the 35. A great field position on a short kick. Nebraska's going to have it in their own 38. Watch Cooley come off the line of scrimmage. He's just going to run right down the hash mark. Wide open in the middle of the field because of by formation, Utah State has Nebraska so spread out. Nobody paying attention to the tight end. There's Bland taking a bad angle. Runs by the football. Cooley keeps his balance. Tremendous flex flexibility to 
turned back to catch that football. So big, so flexible, so fast, so good. Can I quote you? 68 seconds <laughs> on the drive. <laughs> Lord again. Short side of the field. Davis nowhere to go. Platinum's over there. Backside pursuit got there as well. Justin Jackson, the senior from Kent, Washington. Let's and take, good pursuit. Let's take a look. Look at, look at how spread out Nebraska is because of the formation. Remember, all the motion, everything else that Utah State is doing. Nebraska's on their heels a little bit. Look at this hole. Here comes Bland taking the bad angle. Oop, no go. Cooley says, I'm keeping my balance. I'm taking it to pay dirt. And how bad, how big is kicking game? Missed extra point, difference right now. So Nebraska fans seen red early. Lord, and there's a hole right in front of us. The completion is short one to the fullback, Davies. He'll get back to the original line of scrimmage. Let's head downstairs. Jim Knox. Hey, Joe, I'll tell you what, one of the most animated coaches, Chris Tabor, receiver coach, got his offensive unit along with Travis Cox on the bench. He said, that series is over. I promise you guys, this will be a back and forth game. Really getting his unit pumped up. This should be a wild one this afternoon. I'll tell you what, Knox, see Travis Cox, 10 of 11. 10 of 11. The only incompletion was a drop ball on the middle screen by Cooley, but did he make up for it or what? Lord now. On third and 13, again, another dump off. Davis will not get there. Son of Tony Davis, 19th on the Huskers' all-time rushing list with over 2,000 yards. Marvin Clark got there in time. Another former teammate of mine, uh, Joel. Tough Tony Davis. Josh is dead. Tom Rude, Barrett Rude's dead. I feel like it's a Bengal reunion out here in, in Huskerland. And, and Josh plays just like his dad. It, it almost looks like they're twin brothers. I mean, it is a flashback. Josh looks so much like his dad, Tony. Plays like him too. Can you have that many Bengals and still be successful? I'm it's like the early 60s Mets. If you had too many on your team. See though, Joel, in the 70s and 80s, we were in the Super Bowl a couple of times. So you know, had some good teams back then. Kyle Larson, you're right. You're absolutely right with Kenny Anderson as your quarterback. My roommate. Let him go. And then Boomer. Yep. Behind him, David Fia Fia from the 18. And a good play downfield for the Huskers. Great special teams work by Chad Sievers, the middle linebacker. So now it'll be at the 20-yard line for Utah State. College football Saturday presented by Kia Sierra. And a great one next week for us. Iowa, Iowa State to start it all off will be in Ames, Dave. And then the USC Trojans coming off maybe the most impressive win of the opening weekend last week. They've got a tough one today at home against BYU, but next week we'll have on Fox Sportsnet. Second half of our doubleheader against the Rainbows. Iowa, Iowa State, big, big rivalry there. Looking forward to that one. Iowa State's won five in a row. Seneca Wallace led the big, big comeback last year. Cox audibleized too tall for his wide receiver trying to get it to Junior Raymond Hicks out of Kansas City, Kansas. Yeah, that's the worst ball that Travis Cox has thrown today. He has been on target. 10 of 11. The first two drives now 10 of 12 on the afternoon and we talked about him knowing his offense knowing how the defense is trying to take away his offensive scheme and distributing the football all over the field what numbers to start off with yeah what about utah state 122 yards of total offense good low grab coming up with the football for the aggies jason stevens another one of their talented tight ends he went low to get it. He's got it short of the first down by a yard. But well, when you throw the ball about every snap in practice, you get good throwing it and catching it. Look at this catch. Fingertip. Catch the back half of the football. Now get your shoulder pad squared upfield. Pretty nice. I mean, you, you pick that up on first down. That makes it easier as a play caller. Your whole playbook wide open to you. So now third the yard. Empty backfield for Travis Cox. Quick count. He's got the first down. That's what you were looking for earlier down to the 29 of Nebraska. I was, and I'm glad they did at this particular time because they have Nebraska spread out. I mean, on that middle screen, they went empty backfield, and, and the, there was nobody in the box between the tackle box. That quarterback sneak, I think, is available. Yeah, you, got, you want to keep everybody happy. You spread the ball around like this. Travis Cox is getting everybody involved early. Yeah, nine different guys with a catch last week. He's already got five. This is only the third series of today's action. He can distribute the ball to all quadrants of the football field. Long, short, and intermediate. Yeah, the Utah State wants to talk it over. They have used their second time out of the first half. It comes with 66 seconds left and a surprising start to the first quarter. Ball and the Aggies. 
Shocking Nebraska early with a one-point lead. But sure. Hey, Maurice Claret could not get through the Big Ten season last year physically. Right. He missed games. You can't play as an 18-year-old in this league, in the NFL. Quick one. And blocking ahead. What a call by Utah State. Going to their wide receiver, Kenny Coleman. There's an offside, a flag on Nebraska, I believe. I think you're right. One of the D linemen lurched up into the neutral zone, so the play is going to stand. Forget the penalty. Take the yards because they picked up about 12. Defense offside, decline the penalty, yardage is good for a first down. John Bible, long-time veteran of the Big 12, our referee today. Been here, comes up early. You got to listen, watch the football. Come on, come on now. The ball's right under your chin. Don't move till the football moves. Do not listen to the quarterback. He's played enough snaps to know. Tune out the quarterback, move when the football moves. Once again, Utah State moving the football. They've got it first and 10, close to their own 44. Good protection for Cox. Went to the underneath, Fia Fia. And maybe rushed it a little bit that time. And Cabongo said, hey, I was off sides. I'm going to make a play. And it was Fia Fia full fumble. we we'll take him down to the ground. And Dave, go figure. What week do we try to figure out this game? Last week, in 60 minutes of work, one of the more talented groups, Fields, Rashawn Woods of Oklahoma State, got 183 yards the whole day. 145 yards of total offense on 16 snaps for Utah State. They're being very, very efficient throwing the football, and they're neutralizing Nebraska's speed by scheme. They're using their speed against them by formation and window dressing motion. So very quiet, 257th consecutive sellout in Lincoln. In fact, they're shocked so far the way Utah State has been moving the ball early. That's the end of the first quarter. Utah State with a one-point lead over Nebraska. State with a football and a one-point lead. Joel Myers, Dave Lappin, and Jim Knox is going to be talking to that former judge who's celebrating his 100th birthday. Hard to get 100 candles in that little cupcake. Man, you got to get a bigger cake. I mean, one candle. 100 years old, you deserve 100 candles. Get that big cake out there. I think you're looking for a slice of that guy. Uh, absolutely now. Pia Pia. He's got room into the secondary. And close to a first down across the midfield stripe. Our WebMD first quarter numbers. Utah State moving the ball consistently through the air. And they almost double up Nebraska in total yards. Look at that number. Over 100, 105 yards better throwing the football. No turnovers. It's been pl well played. A lot of penalties. One team is throwing the football. I mean, Utah State's throwing the football like Nebraska wishes they could. Now third and four. Cox and the Aggies. Even if they can't pick up the first down. Motion. Field position works. Fia Fia was the one sliding in motion. He looked that way and oh. then threw it up for grabs and almost intercepted off the fingertips of Rude. Then almost picked off. Finally, Hollowell was there. And also Williams. That's right, Demario Williams was in the vicinity. I thought we'd see Demario Williams a little bit more of a factor in rushing the passer. They've done a pretty good job of, of containing him. Barrett Root gets the, the mucker up. Williams almost comes up with the deflected football. Nice effort. Nebraska gets the ball. Ben Chade is going to punt for the first time today, the sophomore from Helena, Montana. Ooh. Davis waits back at the five. Missed it. He did. It's going to take an Aggie bounce, and Davis got in the way just enough. Uh, the Utah State player downfield. Good move, because Reggie Wilson could have downed it. Let's head downstairs. Jim Knox. All right, Joe, here he is, the birthday boy. This is the Honorable Judge Harry A. Spencer. 100 years old, he will turn in 10 days. He's been coming to Nebraska football games since 1926. Judge, your most memorable moment in Nebraska history? Uh, Johnny Rogers. Uh, country turn against Oklahoma. Oh, that was man. back in 1971. There you go. Congratulations for that correct answer, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what. That Judge, was... congratulations on turning 100 years old and enjoy the rest of the game. Thank you. Breaking through first carry of the day for David Horn. He backs up Josh Davis. Horn, though, the true home run threat, the sophomore from Omaha. Last year, five-yard average, running for almost 700 yards. He's got that. He's got that nice little, nice little stutter step, and that punt return by Johnny Rogers against Oklahoma in a big, big football game. I mean, Nebraska and Oklahoma were two, two of the best teams, the two best teams in the country. Johnny Rogers steps up huge, wins the Heisman in that return. 
Run the tight end in motion. Horn again. Slithers his way. It's over, guys. It's over. Across the 35, near the 36. Well, you talked about Johnny Rogers, Heisman Trophy winner, along with Mike Rozier and Eric Crouch, who's Boy. here today and is going to be able to join us, I understand, a little bit later in the second half. Look at that. He averaged 17 yards a touch between returns and receptions. 7 8 a carry. Are you kidding me? On 2,000 yards, 29 touchdowns. And, and we saw it. We saw Crouch. And just amazing numbers by those Heisman candidates. The toss behind Horn in Utah State comes up with a football. Wow. Alert play down there for the Aggies by Kelly Papinga. The short toss, the pitch, not executed well enough. Lord pitches it behind Horn a little bit, and the ball is on the ground. And Kelly Papinga. He's a true freshman out of Evanston, Wyoming. What a thrill for him. It's on the back shoulder pad of Horn. Got to get the ball out in front of him. It could have been handled, but it wasn't. But the pitch was not, not out in front enough. Not enough of a lead on that pitch. The first giveaway of the game, Nebraska plus three against Oklahoma State. Five takeaways, two giveaways. We're minus one in this one. Look at this formation. Look. Yeah. What about a hook and ladder? <laughs> and now a double throw. Yeah. Downfield. Oh! Intercepted. What a read. That's his third on the season. Bullock, the free safety who had two last week, picking off the pass by Matt Cravillo, the backup quarterback. Three interceptions in two games. That's a nice start. And, and you have to admire Utah State. They said, you know what, Mick, Mick Den, he said, we're coming out with our four-man stack. And unfold it, throw back pass. You can throw it down the football field then legally. But tremendous route recognition and break on the football. He's he like, I'm he, not going to be fooled. Bullock said, it's my ball. You know, he got greedy because underneath, did you notice nobody had Kenny Coleman? Yeah. The he, other option? He unfolded wide open underneath. But I think they were, you know, on sudden change going for the throat. And Nebraska said, not today. Nebraska from their own 11. Get it right back into the hands of Horn. He hangs on. He tried to strip it away, though. The linebacker came up. That was Robert Watts. Okay, here's Bullock, and he's watching this thing unfold. And he's saying, I'm going to read the eyes. I'm going to read the eyes. And I, oh, he's going downfield. I'm breaking on the football. It's mine. It's mine. He targeted. I mean, he basically locked on where he was going to throw the football. And Bullock said, thank you very much. I see where you're going with the ball, Cravello. He was a backup quarterback, Cravello, and he's in that stack formation. Now, Lord, on his own. Across the 18, stand him up at the 19, short of the first down by two, Terrence Washington, the safety on the hit. Okay, you got four receivers. The fourth one, though, is a backup quarterback. Throwback pass, they unfold. Bullock. Bullock says, uh -uh, not today. I'm reading you. I see you, Cavillo. I, I, I know what you're doing. Could have gone here. Yes. Could have gone shorter. But Bullock said, Bullock said I, I, I'm reading what you're doing. I know you're trying to go for the home run. Coleman was wide open. Cavello, backup quarterback, had his chance to shine. Take it to Horn, get the first down with Lord. Up to he's 25. Up, he's up, he's up. So plenty of anxious moments early for the Nebraska Cornhuskers coming in ranked number 23 in the nation. And right now, difficult adjustments for them on the defensive side. So as well as the Black Shirts played last week in stopping Oklahoma State, they are confused by the multiple formations of McDenny. They are, what, what they've done is they've taken the aggressiveness out of the Black Shirts a little bit, and they're making them think too much. And when you think too much, you just can't react and flow. And they've got them on their heels a little bit because of all the formation changes, the motion, all those things. Lord, finally looking to throw the ball back to Harry, and the tight end falls down. And did he have some room to roam? Only one over there for Utah State was Rodney Wilson, the outside backer. Nice job by Lord to get rid of the football because the, the uh, pressure from Rodney Wilson was in his face. For him to just get rid of it. Watch Lord, he'll go over here and throw back, and here comes the blitzer, and he's untouched. That's a pretty strong quarterback to be falling away from the line of scrimmage. Harrion has all this room, but the turf monster grabbed his big toe and he went down. So now it's going to be second and long, only a gain of three. Lord is five of five, but all underneath, only 30 yards. And he's pulled down from behind. He'll be short of the first down by a little less than two. Jerem Bono making the stop. So the Aggies hanging tough. And when I talk about Lord, five of five, only 30 yards, he only threw for 78 yards. And it may be Utah State, but when you go on the road to play at Texas this year, at Colorado, at Missouri, 
Jamal Lord better be able to throw the football or they're going to stack the line. And Joel, when Penn State comes in here next week, yes. I mean, you're going to have to be a little more balanced offensively to, to avenge that 40-7 to defeat Penn State put on them last year in Pennsylvania. Third, a little less than a deuce. Horn on the perimeter. Easy first down. Looking for more, he's got it. Man, he's got it all the way across the 40, near the 42-yard line. David Horn. He's the speed out of the backfield. There, there's the patented stutter step that I was talking about with Horn. You know, he takes he takes the uh, the pitch on the option. Watch the stutter step. Pretty good job. That's not bad pursuit by Utah State, though. The good thing that's happening to Utah State, they're not getting knocked off their feet. When you get knocked on the ground, you get cut in half defensively, and there's cutback lanes. They're doing a good job of staying on their feet and pursuing the football. Horn again. Not much available. Give him a couple. Close to three, up to the 44. The Quillis hit on the head. You know, when you put new systems in, defensive and offensive system, defense usually catches on quicker because it's more reactionary. Offensively, there's more timing, more coordination, you know, more meshing that has to go on. And I do think that Nebraska's new offensive installation is a little bit behind their defensive installation, which isn't surprising, particularly offensively going against their first 34 defense. Blocking schemes are different. Drive started back at the Nebraska 11. Lord in trouble. And a positive out of what looked like a negative and almost Ooh. a late hit. Close. No flag is thrown. Close. He was definitely in the white, that five-yard white sideline. And he got chopped over there, but no flag. But this is what Lloyd can do when there's nothing there. Watch 40 come in and, and make the hit well, well out of bounds. I mean, that, that that's not even close. And they could have gotten Frederick, but they didn't. Frederick Lloyd's, Lloyd's about five yards out of bounds, and Frederick takes his pins out. Inexperience of Frederick showing there his first start as an Aggie came last week. He's a sophomore from Salt Lake City. And Frank Solich just let the officials know you missed that one. you got to protect our guy. He's out of bounds. Third and five from the 46. Lord, all day, deflected. Good read underneath by the tackle. I thought Justin Jackson got his hands up, Joel. Yes. 41 in the white jersey, got the muckers up and, and, and knocked, knocked the ball airborne. Well, did he use his noggin on that play? It's, it's, it's a way to use your head if that's the case because he just, he gets a uh, boy right in, the, right in the smush. I mean, right in the face mask. I mean, that, that'll stun you. He got the hand up, but he didn't need it. It was right off the face mask and airborne. And he's saying, I'm okay. Give me some smelling salts. I'm ready. Kyle Larson had to punt it away. He had a shank last week. The guy that's had a sensational career here at Nebraska. We Second saw, team all Big 12 last year. We saw him hit that 75-yarder in practice yesterday. Jim. Let him go. Let him go. Nice. Via Fia. Falls for the fair catch, and he's got it. Back inside his own 20 at the 16. So the Aggies hanging tough. Don't tell them it's only their second appearance on national TV since 81. To Lincoln, Nebraska, Utah State leading the Huskers 7-6. And number 12 on the sidelines is the new Husker backup quarterback. In fact, he had all the headlines in the Nebraska newspapers today. Frank Solich, Joel and Dave, as you may recall, the backup quarterback will get playing time here in the second quarter. A true freshman. I talked to him before the game. He said he's not nervous. I asked him, what do you do better? Pass the football run. He said both. He's a confident freshman. And guys, think back. This is the first true freshman getting significant snaps since Tommy Frazier did back in 1992, and that tells you a little something right there. And Tommy did make his debut in 92 as a true freshman. Young man, native Floridian. Well, they said Joe Daly's got a good arm. The question is, Joel, with a 7-6 football game down a point, do they stay with that plan and play him this early in the game when they're losing? I thought probably they figured they'd have more control of the football game than they have right now. There may be a change in plans because he's limited with the package that he knows to be able to execute. You know if Joe Daly's in Nebraska, he can run the football. Can he throw it? And that's why I bring up he's got a good arm because they need to keep people honest through the passing game. Cox pumping. Now is he looking deep? He's going deep. And almost a great grab by Chris Stallworth. Popped it up in the air trying to get it to himself. Into double coverage. Looked like a cover two downfield. Cox got hit, and he's, he got up a little woozy. Cox has staggered a little bit, and, and it's after the throw. You know, a lot of times, quarterbacks, you know, mama, don't let your son to grow up to be a quarterback because 
after the play, he is just absolutely bulldog to the ground, and he runs into one of the big defensive linemen and just gets stoned. And down the football field, cover two, you have safety, cornerback coverage bracket down the football field. But Cox could ding a little bit. Hill position-wise, a very important snap for the Black Shirts. Blitz is coming on Cox, eludes the pressure, and gets the first down. He's got it across the 26 to Chris Stallworth. That's what just, footwork. Great elusiveness in the pocket, Joel. And you have a double illegal motion, double two men moving at the same time in the Utah State backfield for the second time today. But watch, watch the elusiveness. A jailbreak by Barrett Rude. Nobody picks up the blitzing linebacker, and he just eludes him, sidesteps him, and delivers the football in a timely fashion. But a break for the Cornhuskers. Second time it's been called, as you mentioned, against the Aggies. You have two the guys. Aggies' confidence has to be building to spike the penalty. Spike the penalties. Yeah, but you have to eliminate the self-destruction. The second time eliminating two big plays, Joel. One of them was about a 30-yard completion down the field. This one eliminates a first down. I mean, you can't self-destruct against Nebraska in Lincoln. You have to clean up those penalties and mistakes. Just about halfway through the second quarter. Aggies cling to a one-point lead. But now instead of first down across the 26, third and 14 at their own 12. Straight four-man rush, look uh -oh. out for Williams, uh -oh. fumble, and Williams calls it in. He's got the hip and the recovery. Man. What a play by DeMario Williams. The senior from Beckville, Texas. Well, the first defensive takeaway by Nebraska. You talk about a short field, it can't be any shorter for the offense. DeMario Williams, a great speed rusher on the edge, and he was matched up on Donald Penn. And Donald Penn, the left tackle. Mario Williams up the field, low shoulder pads. Penn can't stay with him. Now he, the back can't pick him up. He's closing in. Tomahawk chops the, chops the ball out of there and takes it away. Sack, forced fumble, fumble recovery. That's a star right there on the forehead for DeMario. That's big-time play. He led the Huskers in stops last year. And you talk about a short field. He just gave it to him at the one. Judd Davies, he's in. And now, will they give it to him? Yes. Touchdown, Huskers. Opportunistic uh, black shirt defense, Joel. Last week, Barrett Rude recovered a fumble, took it in 15 yards for a touchdown. Williams forces a fumble and puts it on the shadow of the goal line for his offense. Judd Davies just full back dive. Nice play by DeMario Williams. He he showed himself big, and Nebraska missed the first extra point, so they're going for two to get back on schedule scoring-wise. So the two-point conversion. Can they make it a 14-7 lead? Wide side of the field. Davis won't get there. Good deal. Again. Could come into play. That missed extra point by DeAngelis. It has forced the issue for the Huskers, but right now, Williams forcing the situation and giving Nebraska the lead. The new value frontier by Dr. Pepper BU. Nothing's better than Dr. Pepper. And by a Toyota. Get the feeling, Toyota. Welcome back to Lincoln. Mid-80s, humidity about 40%. Great day for college football and one of the great venues you will ever see. The only game in town. That's the big red of Lincoln. And now Fia Fia and Dennis are back deep. Jerome Dennis bringing it back Whoa. to the lane. Look out. Dennis across the 30. All the way to the 40, 42 yard line. Great field position again for Utah State and Travis Cox. But first, a Dr. Pepper game break. Back to the studio. What's the latest, Mike? Uh, Joel, we're going to take you to the big. All right, now Nebraska's got the mic. <laughs> Speaking of shock so far even though nebraska's got the lead it's been utah state that has piled up the yardage offensively Cox oh, williams. Side. williams again oh, man back to back sacks man and fumbled it he well, lost the let's ball see. If he they lost give it nebraska yeah. they will that's two forced fumbles on two consecutive plays boy that was a late call though it looked like it came out at the very end when cox hit the ground I, I think uh, the, I saw officials throwing beanbags. There's a penalty flag. Let's see if Nebraska was offside. If so, what does that neutralize a big play? There's a flag on the far side of the field. When the referees start throwing beanbags, they're spotting a fumble, and two did. After the play had ended, there was unsportsmanlike conduct on the fumble on the receiving team. 15-yard penalty, first down. Nebraska unsportsmanlike conduct is going to cost them 15 yards, but 
Demario Williams, two straight plays, two straight sacks. Watch the speed rush, the get off. Man, he just beats him out of his stance. Fairly laid a finger on him. Now Williams knocks, knocks the ball loose. There's the ball out. Cox can't fall on it. It comes off his hip, and Nebraska comes up with the football. Watch the backside hit, blind side. Cox loses the ball, boom. It bounces up to him. He can't control it. It's still on the ground, and Nebraska comes up with it. Boy, what plays back to back by Williams. The covered football, Bernard Thomas, the rush in. And now, out of the gun, Jamal Lord. And what a play in the open field by Marcus Stell, the defensive back on Lord. Jim Knox. Hey, Joel, after Mario came to the bench after that Cornusker defense uh, got the touchdown, Mario came back and he told his teammates, he said, you know what I'm going to do next time? I'm going to fake him outside and go inside, and it paid off. Yeah, he didn't have to go inside, though. <laughs> he just, and when he faked him outside, he continued outside because he went up the football field and just absolutely beat Donald Penn off the ball. Man, it was just a sprint to the quarterback. What and quickness. It's funny. When we talked to the Aggies coaches earlier in the week, they said, watch number seven for Nebraska. Here comes the end around the Cornhuskers. LaFleur on the outside, inside the 30. The sophomore from Omaha with a first down on a gadget play. He was one of five through flight freshmen to play for the Huskers last year. Watch, watch inside. The guard is going to work his way out on the reverse and get a downfield block. Pretty good hustle. Check this out. Here comes the big fella. Watch him lock up on the defensive back kickout block. That's pretty good effort and movement down the field. Sustaining the blocks. Nebraska's got the best blocking wide receivers in college football. And when you block well on the edge, you get big, big runs. Nebraska moving the football with six and a half to play in the half, leading by five. Don't forget what happened to New Mexico State, another group of Aggies last week. Turnovers killed him. And what a play in the backfield. Spinning through a block, Jake Stewart, the linebacker. Big play on the quarterback, Jamal Lord. Stewart, a sophomore from Logan, Utah. And this is his first season of seeing considerable playing time. And this is what Utah State wanted to do more of, get Nebraska off schedule. Instead of letting him pick up five, six, seven yards on first down, they lose three. Now it's second and 12, second and 13, force of a different color. Loss of three, almost four, back to the 29. Lord, option again, it's available. The big quarterback inside the 20, down to the 18, needs two more for a first down. And Terrence Washington, a little safety with the hit. Well, there's, there's good blocking by Nebraska everywhere. Let's start with the offensive line. Watch him, watch him just seal the perimeter, seal the edge here. Herrien, double team with the tackle. Now seal it all inside. That's strong, that's sweet. And watch down the football field. Another hustling wide receiver making his block. Lalee making a block in the Look at Lalee's block on the edge. Allows Lord to cut up inside. Good block Lalee by Lalee on Rosencrantz. In Nebraska. Pick up the two and a half they need for the first down. Davis will do exactly that. And he's got it all the way to the 11. Wilson caught up with him, but Josh Davis low. Well, he really does stay low. And I'll tell you, this is the old power play by Nebraska. Watch him pull up inside in the fullback. They're shoulder to shoulder. The right guard pulling the fullback. Look at him. Boom. Shoulder to shoulder. Oh, man, does that create a seam. Double teaming inside on that linebacker, fullback and guard holding hands, sashaying through the hole. That's Nebraska power football. Well, you're living large over here. Aren't you? Uh, I, I love the stuff up front. Sashaying their way through. How about that? <laughs> Lord, corner of the end zone, and just out of the reach of his diving wide receiver, Pilkington. Ross Pilkington, the sophomore from Fort Collins. Now, this is the kind of throw that Barney Cotton wants Lord to be able to make the touch pass. This is called the fade. And the ball is, is airborne. How close is it to be in a play? Very, very close. Just over the outstretched fingers. Plenty of air under the ball. Not quite enough accuracy. Not a bad throw by Lord, but that's what you want to be able to complete in that red zone. Now on second and ten from the 11. Quite a pop, but Davis spins right through it. Down to the seven. You know that throw by Lord on the fade? It looked like it was going to be way past Pilkington. He, he closed well. Yeah, Pilkington, and he, and he extended nicely for the football as well. I mean, you can't you can't fault the effort the wide receiver gave Lord. Pilkington gave it every effort. Barney Cotton right here, the big fella, saying, oh, man, those are the plays we have to make to be able to 
force defenses to defend the whole field. So now from the seven, almost like a goal situation. They get a first down inside the one. Lord, short side of the field, and turned in by Utah State's quarterback Marcus Dell. He couldn't finish the play, but he slowed him down enough to put him into Michael Gates. And what Barney wants to have happen is more big plays. Last week against Oklahoma State, Joel, 81 snaps. Only two of those plays went for 20 yards or more. 81 snaps, a lot of five, six, four, seven-yard plays. Powerful Nebraska football, but he wants to be able to stretch the field with some of those big plays, then it makes it easier to do everything else. Now the true freshman from Spring, Texas, is going to get his first field goal attempt. Right. David Dykes. It's going to be a 23-yard try for Dykes, not to Angeles. He makes the extra point. Severe angle. And he put him up by eight. Yes. So Nebraska capitalizing. That's 10 straight points for Nebraska. Actually making nine straight points with the field goal and the touchdown. They missed the two-point conversion. And they all come off back-to-back -back turnovers from Utah State. And an update from the horseshoe. All at the half on the Nissan Halftime Report. Joe Myers. Thank you, Mike. And Nebraska kicks it an eight-point lead. It is going to be picked up on the far side. Dennis with a nice return again, spinning his way close to the 30. He went to Montclair Prep out in the San Fernando Valley. He's got it to the 29-yard line and across from Montclair Prep. My all-time favorite barbecue in Los Angeles, the Tyler Texas Barbecue. Dr. Hoagley Wogley's. Got a feeling he had a lot of lunch periods over there. Now, what a return again for Utah State's Jerome Dennis. So the Aggies, their own worst enemy right now, like last week when they faced Utah and Salt Lake City and lost 40-20. to They've got some talent offensively. They do, and here's, here's some offensive talent up front. Trevor Hutton is wearing number 50 for the rest of the half. They ripped his jersey, 10-inch ripping his jersey, 63. He'll wear it in the second half. This guy, an Outland Trophy candidate, I'll tell you why after this play. Unbelievable physical strength we'll talk about. He's a low. <laughs> you can see that. Now, Fia Fia. And they have not committed to the run at all. He took a shot. Coming across the 32 to the 33. Black shirts really haven't dominated the line of scrimmage at all, though, today. As Barrett Rouge, you can hear it in the background, made the hit. Yeah, and, and they, they ran right behind Trevor Hutton there, their Outland Trophy candidate. Okay, this guy is a weight room freak. I'm telling you. 525-pound <laughs> bench press. 820-pound squat. That is illegal. Watch your language. I mean, that's that's unrealism right there in terms of overall body strength. And he is looking strong at the line of scrimmage. He's not afraid of anybody. He's a senior from Santa Maria, California. 6'2", 310-pounder. Underneath, bubble screen. Coleman's there. He's got a first down. He's across the 40, out to the 42. I'd still throw to Coleman if I was the backup Crivello on that double pass. Yeah, exactly. And once again, Utah State, they're doing so many things well. Spreading the football field, empty backfield, spreading out Nebraska, quick passes, distributing the ball to different people. They've run this wide receiver alley screen four different ways, you know, different looks for Nebraska every time. And their tempo is so good. They're up to the line of scrimmage quickly. Sometimes they're going no huddle. They've got the black shirts thinking too much. The black, look at them moving around. It's like, how do you sort this all out? And now a little press coverage for Nebraska. So often we've seen zone from the Huskers. Watch him. Watch the Mario off the edge. Well, the left tackle Donald Penn remembers that. And now Cox making the most of the opportunity. Pushed out of bounds, but good yardage. Stopping the clock as he's knocked out of bounds at the 48. And, and, and what did they decide to do with the Mario Williams? Well, blocked down, and now the back. Here comes the back, hooking him inside. So they're going to double team him. Good adjustment. I mean, yep, they're, they're going to give Demario Williams all kinds of looks. They're going to have tight ends over there. They're going to slide the line so the line can double team him. They're going to put a tight end over there. They're going to do a lot of three-step drops, get rid of the ball quickly, all because of him. Why? He had two straight plays, quarterback sack, force fumble, nine points. That's why he's been the biggest impact in this football game right there. It has not been the uh, Cornhuskers' offense. It's been their defense. They put them in great shape at the one of Utah State in the midfield stripe for those nine points. And uh -oh. around, look out. It looked like he wanted to throw the yeah. football. Good idea. Just throw it away. And that was Barry Tony, the wide receiver. The junior from Newberry Park, California. Played his college ball before that at Moore Park Junior College in Southern California. 
And a guy who's played minor league baseball in the Angels system. So he's been around the block a few times. Another guy around the block and the field, Jim Knox. All right, Joe, I want to remind college football fans, you want us to check out anything around Memorial Stadium here in Lincoln, Nebraska today, just drop us an email, foxsports.com, keyword, ask Knox, and we'll check it out for you, Joe. Well, I can't wait for some of those questions for you, Jim. I'm telling you, Knox has got the knowledge, though. Knox the knowledge. Cooley, is he a tough customer? Root still couldn't get him down when he thought he had an angle on him. He's got a first boy. down to the 45 of Nebraska. Dave, I would not be surprised as they stop the clock and the movement of the chains of Utah State went into the locker room tied at 15. You know, Cooley impressed me not only physically but mentally. Joel, he drops the ball on a fourth down middle screen. Instead of sulking and pouting about it, he catches a 41-yard touchdown pass. He rebounded from adversity immediately. The guys get good makeup. And now we're going to have a timeout called. And is it going to be Nebraska's call? Yes. They need to make some decisions on the defensive side. Well, they had to call it because they had 12 men on the field. Is that all? And they were sprinting off the field late, and it disrupted the, the uh, timing of the play. And at that point, Bo Pelini says, let's call, let's call timeout and think about it and talk about it. 140 yards passing. Travis Cox, 14 for 18, hooking up with Cooley on a regular basis. Utah State with a first down. Now does Cox have time? He's got more than enough time. Deep down oh. the middle, and it's battered away from Coleman. What timing by Philip Bland. The Bland man comes through. Nice job. Route recognition by Bland. Watch him break. Nice job. He finds the football. Gets his head turned. Found the football as quickly as the receiver did. So he was able to make a play on the ball. Now, was the ball a little bit late? Travis Cox for one of the few times today's only missed five attempts in 19 tries, 14 of 19. For the second straight rush opportunity, they put a running back on Williams. They Speed want to against him. They want to match up with the quickness. Exactly. Look, it's still completing a very high, high percentage. Very efficient quarterback today, Travis Cox. Let's see if he goes to his favorite target. As they show the blitz out of the secondary. And... Cox moving by oh. design. He had Cooley wide open and maybe rushed it a little bit too much. I think he tried to, like, you know, when you're a fastball pitcher and you aim it, I mean, he was trying to be too perfect. Watch this little action. Little guard now coming out and kicking out. Tackle, I should say. Tight end releases. Tackle kicks out on Williams. Little play action stuff. Wide open. Tried to be too, I don't know, he was, like, trying to aim it in there. Cut it loose like you have the whole game. So Cooley was available. He's got six for 92. And that touchdown was 41 big yards. So that'll get your average per reception up there when you go 41 down the middle of the field. Utah State has used their final timeout of the half. It comes with a minute 15 remaining. Now what an entertaining first 30 minutes of play where we thought that Nebraska was going to beat them up in the trenches. Well, Utah State had other ideas, and they have, by design, moved things around. Look at, look, at the, look at the marks on the helmet. That's some red Nebraska paint. He's been blocking people, too, not just catching. I like it. Nissan halftime report, minute 15 away. Mike, Kellen, Billy Ray are going to have all the scores and highlights from the top 25. We'll have an upset in the making. Mike told us about the ACC. NC straight trying to come back against Wake Forest. Join Mike Kellen and Billy Ray. That is just a couple of minutes away. Will Phillip Rivers be able to bring the North Carolina State Wolfpack back? Phillip Rivers, excellent quarterback, setting all kinds of records, school records as well as conference records. Heisman Trophy hopeful if he can bring his team back against Wake Forest. It would help his candidacy a lot. If he doesn't, maybe over for him. Now, DeMario Williams creating, creating points for the Cornhuskers. And it's all about quickness and speed, beating the tackle off the line of scrimmage. Sack, force fumble, fumble recovery. Amazing play there. Once again, sack, force fumble. He doesn't recover it, but a teammate does. That's two dynamic plays by the speed rusher right here, Demario Williams. Let's see if he gets into the face of Cox once again. Uh-oh. He does it again. Boom. Demario Williams with his third sack of the half. Got to give the tackle some help. Demario Williams is too quick, too fast. Too low, too athletic. Man, you, you can't put DeMario Williams in one-on-one -on -one pass rush situations. He'll sack you. And once again, oh, man, the speed. And holding hands because of the snap count. The loud crowd hurts him. Doesn't get off the snap count well enough. Off the line of scrimmage. Three sacks for DeMario Williams. 
two of them forced fumbles, nine points on those forced fumbles. He has been the force. And now Nebraska calls a timeout, so they'll get it back with plenty of time, 62 seconds left, and make it decent field position. They, they yeah. had a different tackle in there, Joel. Now tomorrow it all starts with the Rams and the Giants. Doubleheader game one. The NFL returning to Fox. Falcons and Cowboys, second half of the doubleheader. The NFC on Fox. And don't forget, it all starts with J.B. and the guys for the pregame show at 12 o'clock Eastern. So it's finally here. NFL Sunday number one, the first of 17 in the regular season. We love our Saturdays and our Sundays. Oh, absolutely. They're great as well. And they love Saturdays here in Lincoln, Nebraska. Tremendous venue. Well, Demario Williams is a team captain, and I bring that up because he is the first junior college transfer to be elected a team captain at Nebraska since 1957. That's how much the coaches and his teammates think of him. And this is a punt, and they have him in the game to rush the punter. And they have speed there. They, they've used two tackles against him now. They started with Penn. They went to Birmingham. Nobody can block him. Almost a terrible snap, and now a duck hook. Who's on the first tee? Yeah. The punter, Ben Chait. He rushed it. He had more time because he went up top and threw him out of his rhythm. And I'll tell you, I can hook it with the best of them, and I think he beat me on this. Yeah, this is my golf swing right here. Nice job to catch the punt, the snap, but then a, not a very good drop. And he said, oh, man, did I, did I mess that up? You know what? It wasn't all me, though. He's going to go talk to his deep snapper and say, come on, give me a shot. He, he was very athletic to go airborne to, to, to catch the, the bad snap, but then timing disrupted from there. So now Nebraska in great shape. Look like they'd be back inside their own 20. They've got a first and 10 at the 37. And a busted play. Lord looked to give it off to David Horn. Nobody at home. And a sack instead. It was only a 17-yard punt sack instead in the backfield for Rodney Wilson. You know, Joel, as we approach the half here, Utah State has to make a decision is, do we continue to spread the field and confuse Nebraska? Because we can't pass block Demario Williams. And in order to pass block him, they're going to have to leave a back in the backfield or a tight end. They're going to have to put more bodies over there, outnumber them, but then that eliminates them spreading the field and doing all the confusion. And, and Mick Dennehy is going to have to make some decisions and adjustments at the half. How do we block Demario Williams and still confuse the secondary in Nebraska? I can't believe that Nebraska wasn't going into the hurry up. What kind of confidence does that show in your offense, Dave? Yeah, I, I, think, I think right now, Barney Cotton, his mentality is, look, I just don't want to screw this up for the defense. You know, don't turn it over. Don't make mistakes. The defense is dominating the football game. Demario Williams is controlling the line of scrimmage. They, they force uh, turnovers for us. Let's not mess it up offensively. Yeah. Not exactly a great feeling for your offensive unit. Nebraska back into the top 25 at number three after the win over number 24 last week, Oklahoma State. But what a start to the season for the Big 12. Oh, yeah. Three, three of, the, of the first seven. Right. Five overall in the top 24. That's uh, Look at that. It's pretty good. That's a lot of Big 12 action right there. Five of the top 24 teams. Almost half the conference ranked in the top 25 of the land. That's pretty good strength, top to bottom. Uh, is there, and then you've got teams that are coming on, like Missouri with Brad Smith and a couple of others. Deck's going to be a real good force this year. And Oklahoma State was Without in the top 25 until Nebraska beat them in the opener. So there's a lot of teams. You go to the top 30, you have over half of the conference in the top 30 in the country. Frank Soldich picking up win number 50 last week. They'll take a snap, head to the locker room, and go in, fortunately, with an eight-point lead. But it, it is surprising when a Nebraska team doesn't utilize the final 60 seconds with a timeout on the board. Yeah, and, and right now the offense is struggling, there's no doubt. Down we go, Jim Knox. Okay, Coach, right now the black shirts are playing well, yet the offense struggling a bit. How concerned are you going into half? We're not really playing well on either side of the ball. We forced a couple turnovers, but, uh, but they really went up and down the field uh, in, early in the game and uh, much of the uh, uh, early part of the second quarter. They, we did adjust and slowed them down a little bit, but um, we need to uh, try to get some big plays going here. We're not getting any big plays on the offensive side of it. All right, Coach, best of luck in the second half. Joe? Uh, I like the candor and the honesty yep. of Frank Solders. They're really not playing that well on either side of the ball, especially on the offensive side of the ball. they got to go into the second quarter on the defensive side. Still, Nebraska's on top by eight. Now, let's rejoin.